The procedure to implant eCoin for OAB was designed to be performed in an office setting, under local anesthesia, device implantation is unilateral, site laterality is determined by the surgeon and patient. eCoin works to treat refractory overactive bladder syndrome by stimulating the tibial nerve. Once inserted, the eCoin device is situated at the point in the lower leg where the tibial nerve is most superficial. The typical instruments necessary to perform the procedure are in a sterilizable kit. Also provided in the kit include a marking template and sizing blunt dissection tool. The main steps in the procedure are listed. Each step will be demonstrated in detail in this video. Step 1. Position and prepare patient. Remove shoes, socks, and trousers. Position the patient with the leg externally rotated such that the medial ankle and malleolus surface are facing up. Step 2. Mark implant location on leg. Palpate, then mark the anterior and posterior borders of the medial malleolus. Next, mark the midpoint. Hold the template in position and use a marking pen to draw a circle along the inner edge of the large opening. This circle indicates the surface projection of the e-coin device position. Next, Mark a straight line through the narrow slot. This line indicates the planned incision. A summary of the markings is shown on this diagram. Step 3. Inject local anesthetic. Clean the skin around and over the anticipated injection sites with isopropyl alcohol swabs, taking care not to wipe away the markings. Using a 25 or 27 gauge needle, Generously infiltrate local anesthetic subcutaneously into the leg. Typically 10 to 20 milliliters is needed. A long-acting local anesthetic such as bupivacaine with epinephrine is recommended. The treated area should generously include the plan incision, the plan device location, and areas in between. After injection, massage the area to promote diffusion of the anesthetic into the surrounding tissues. Step 4. Sterilize lower leg and drape. Circumferentially prep the foot, ankle, and lower leg with the desired prep solution. Place the prepped foot and leg on a sterile drape or towels. Add additional sterile drapes or towels to square off and create the sterile field. The forefoot and toes should be covered with a sterile towel or sterile surgical glove. Generous, wide draping is recommended. Remark implant location. The bottom edge of the template should be parallel to the sole of the foot. The slot in the template should be parallel to the Achilles tendon. Step 5. Make incision and create device pocket. With a scalpel, make an incision on the marked longitudinal line. Using dissecting scissors, bluntly separate the subcutaneous fat layer. Identify the plane between the subcutaneous fat and the fascia. A self-retaining retractor helps visualization while performing the blunt dissection. Once the fat is cleared, the fascia will be visible. The fascia appears as a white layer with transverse fibers. The blunt dissection tool was developed to simplify the process of pocket creation. Gently and firmly push the tool until its rounded end coincides with the marked circle on the overlying skin. Step 6. Insert device into pocket. The device is removed from its packaging in sterile fashion. Generously irrigate the pocket with normal saline. Insert the device and manually slide it caudally on top of the fascia until centered at the marked circle. Step 7. Close incision in layered fashion and apply dressing. To prevent proximal migration of the device, an absorbable internal simple stitch can be placed to tack the subcutaneous fat layer down to the fascia, just above the device. A partial thickness fascial bite is advised. Close the incision with absorbable sutures in standard layered fashion. To obliterate dead space, scarpus fascia is closed with inverted stitches. The deep dermis layer is similarly closed with inverted stitches. Finally, the epidermis is approximated with the running subcuticular stitch.
Apply skin glue or steri strips per surgeon's preference. Apply the waterproof topical dressing. Step 8. Apply ankle support. Patients will be provided with an ankle support. The support is worn to provide gentle compression, minimize device movement, and protect the incision during healing. The ankle support should be used until the one-month post-procedure activation visit, and possibly longer per surgeon's discretion and patient preference. Step 9. Provide aftercare instruction. Postoperative analgesia as needed. The incision should be kept covered and dry until the first post-procedure clinic visit. Mild bruising and swelling is normal for one to two weeks. Avoid vigorous or strenuous activity and exercise for eight weeks. Ordinary walking is acceptable. No running or bicycling. Patients should not wear shoes that impinge on the device edge. The tops of shoes should end well above or well below the device.